Waging war on corruption. Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight filling in for Alex. We're going to have an interview between Alex Jones and the founder of The Daily Caller, Tucker Carlson. This is a never-before-seen interview going to be coming up in the very next segment. Don't miss this. This is a great interview on a wide variety of topics. But just before the break, we were talking about what's going on at CPAC and people's reactions to the different speeches that have been made there. Of course, we have Marco Rubio, John McCain, John Bolton, Lindsey Graham making the case for even more intervention than we see going on from Barack Obama. They think he's weak and isolationist. And we want to see what that's, how that's going to be pushed back uh, from Rand Paul. Hopefully, he'll have some uh, a different opinion about that today. But we wanted to get to the, uh, the opinion of people who have been watching these speeches. Uh, Hugo, you were saying that uh, you had been to CPAC in the past. And uh, what do you think about this year, though? Have you watched any of the speeches? Uh, it's Julio, David. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, watching some of the speeches, for the, for the most part, it seems like they are towing the neocon party line with, with, mm -hmm. with some of their speeches. There are very few, I mean, very few, any uh, liberty-minded speeches given at CPAC. I mean, even Mike Lee's speech, I, I saw a, a bit of it today, was, seemed more, more towards the party line than than a real liberty-minded speech. You know, Donald Trump, he, you hear him speak, and this man, has, if you follow his money, he's donated to the Democratic Party in the oh, past, yeah. including money to uh, Rahm Emanuel here in Chicago. Uh, so I, I really hope that Rand Paul really shines. If you look at the straw poll results from years past with Ron Paul winning the last few years, when I covered it in 2012, literally CPAC did their best to try to squash the libertarian uh, revolution that was going on at, at that That's time right. with momentum Ron Paul was gaining. That's right. And I, sure I'm not sure how, how I'm not sure how it's going how how it is this year. But with the speeches, you can tell they're trying to tow the party line. But but from what I observed at CPAC, the what what the real impact for a, you know a libertarian minded person going there is the talk talk with the people. For the most part, the people at CPAC, these conservatives that you know watch Fox News daily, they're, they're good people, they're, they're decent people, but they're being strayed in the wrong direction, being strayed towards that neocon line. But the, li the libertarian-minded people, from what I saw, have you know, have done a great job in, in, in talking with the people, having civil debates, uh, you know, getting people to discuss NDAA from when I was there in 2012. Mm -hmm. And I hope that this year they're talking about the IRS and they're talking about, you know, intervention, intervention and they're talking about the Federal Reserve and, you know, and that, the NSA. That's where the impact of CPAC comes exactly, and the yeah. NSA, and you know, and many more topics, even GMOs. Uh, I know at CPAC they're having a panel about li can libertarians and conservatives get along. So they're trying to sway the the minds of those people at CPAC, and I'm pretty sure they're going to say, you know, they could get along, but they have to go towards a conservative mind. Well, you know, if they're going to take the traditional party line of intervention abroad foreign wars and metaphorical wars here at home, a war on drugs, the, the various wars that we've had here, the, the war of terror. If they're going to take these hard lines to create a police state here at home and an interventionist military everywhere around the world, that's a losing strategy. That's why the Republican Party is shrinking. If they're going to grow this party, they're going to have to take the moral high road. They're going to have to transcend these positions. But so far, unfortunately, I've seen even a lot of the newcomers, like I point out, Marco Rubio is now aligning himself with the old John McCain faction. And, you know, who's always, this is the guy, John McCain is the guy that goes to every conflict as it's beginning around the world. So you see him meeting with Al-Qaeda in Syria, then you see him meeting with neo-Nazis in the Ukraine. Does that tell us that he's a made man of the New World Order or what? I mean, this is a guy, they picked someone, obviously they wanted Obama in because they take a young, attractive black man and put him up against the oldest, crustiest white man they can find who's really an angry person. But clearly he was their candidate. We're gonna be right back with a groundbreaking interview between Alex Jones and Tucker Carlson of The Daily Caller. Stay tuned, you're not gonna to wanna to miss this.
social engineers are not just targeting us with propaganda. They are manipulating our genetics. We are being targeted at every level by estrogen mimickers that lower our testosterone and other hormones and natural compounds that the body needs. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula sourced from powerful organic herbs and then concentrated for maximum potency. Super male vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals. Super male vitality by InfoWars Life is so powerful that I only take half the recommended dose. For a limited time, we are offering 15% off Super Male Vitality at InfoWarsLife.com to introduce you to this powerful supplement. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your Super Male Vitality. InfoWarsLife.com. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico, where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure the sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives Gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee. And it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press. All the while enjoying a truly great tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. The facts are in. The studies are legion. Sodium fluoride and other toxic members of the fluoride family are devastating the health and cognitive ability of the American people. So why are the social engineers adding it to the water? Simple. Dumb down the host population that the parasitic technocracy is feeding on. We may not have been able to get fluoride out of the water supply yet, but we can help to get it out of our bodies. I am extremely excited to announce the exclusive InfoWars Life Fluoride Shield Formula fusing six of the best documented ingredients from around the world to help the body remove not just toxic fluoride residues from the body, but a whole host of toxic substances. Let's take a stand against the globalist by blocking their poisons with Fluoride Shield. I use Fluoride Shield every day. Secure your Fluoride Shield and other pioneering formulations at InfoWarsLife.com today. Let's start cleansing our bodies now and support the InfoWar at the same time. That's InfoWarsLife.com. The answer to 1984 is 1776. You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. Welcome back to The Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and we have a very special treat for you. You know, Tucker Carlson was in studio and had an extensive interview with Alex Jones, but there was a much more extensive interview between the two of them that is we're going to air now for the very first time. And this is going to touch on things like the dictatorial moves of Obama, the attack on the Second Amendment, and it's going to talk about September 11th. You're going to want to see this. Here's that report. Being a rugged all-American like Vladimir Putin, Tucker Carlson, host of Fox News and the owner of DailyCaller.com, is down here in Texas to go wild boar hunting. And while he was in town, uh, he graciously agreed to come in to the InfoWars studios to talk to us today. And so here he is in the flesh. But first, I want to play a clip of the great things he has to say about me. Alex <laughs> Jones. <laughs> hey, you see the little part of you are. He sure, certainly is. <laughs> I set my alarm to wake up yeah, to I'll tell you what, I don't want any Alex Jones people in my house. <laughs> Now, Tucker, that was four years ago, and I've always, you know, admired a lot of the work you've done, but I really appreciate you coming down to visit us. Hey, oh, are you kidding? I was having breakfast with a friend of mine in the media business about three months ago who mentioned your name. I said, Alex Jones? I said, yeah, he's a good guy. You should go meet him. And I thought, I'd love to. So I was going to be in Austin, and I'm glad to be here. Well, what did you expect when you came in here? 
Uh, I expected an armed compound, and that's exactly what I found. <laughs> we're deep, for those who don't know where we are, we're about 150 feet below the surface of the Texas prairie here in a steel-reinforced silo. This was an ICBM missile silo at one point, wasn't it? It was, but I mean, you noticed, though, that you had to hit Coke or Pepsi, and then that's when the door opened, <laughs> and then you came down. Uh, we're only about six floors under the ground, though. That's awesome. Do you like 50 caliber rifles? I, I love one. I don't have one, um, but I would love a Barrett. I've always wanted one. Well, I'm, I'm a gun guy for sure. Next time you're in town, we'll go out and go shooting them. I would love, I would, honestly, I would love that. I've taken Dave Mustaine out. I've taken uh, Mike Judge out. A lot of folks shooting the fence. Well, I, you, for those who aren't here, uh, you just showed me an I-beam, a steel I-beam, a construction beam with holes that big from the 50 cal. It's so impressive. We do have 50 cals. We're not actually underground, though. We're on ground level. Yeah, you are, sadly. Actually, we have paintings of Mao and Lenin hanging on the walls. And he loved them. I did. <laughs> they were done up with glitter and stuff. No, I'm really glad to be here. And as to that tape, um, that was uh, four years ago during the Iowa caucuses. And I was in, uh, two and a half years or something like that. And this guy comes up to me with a microphone and starts asking me, was 9-11 an inside job? And I said to him, I'm as skeptical about the U.S. government as anybody. And I'm also very open-minded, willing to believe anything. I don't think there's any evidence of that. And he just got in my face and wouldn't uh, back off. No, no, he followed you for seven minutes, so finally you said that. But, I mean, I thought it was entertaining, so. It was, it was pretty funny. Adam Kokesh, who I think is in jail now. But anyway, I enjoyed the exchange. Well, he finally got out, and he does have a lot of courage for the Second Amendment. But I do have a few 9-11 questions, but that's at the end. Let's come back to those if we can. Great. You are a pioneer in mainstream media that went into alternative media and has been very, very successful and uh, covering a lot of libertarian, freedom-based news. I wouldn't call it left or right. Where do you think the media landscape is right now, and are we seeing the death of the state-run dinosaur media? There's no question about it. I mean, and I should say, I'm hardly a visionary. I only got into it because I got fired <laughs> from dinosaur media. I was at MSNBC. The station turned pretty dramatically left. As you know, I didn't fit in. They canned me. I was unemployed with four kids. And I was at dinner with a college roommate of mine, and, and we were talking about what do we do next with our lives, and let's start something. So we did, and it seemed obvious. Digital is clearly the future. How soon the future will get here is an open question. A lot of people still get their news from broadcast television, from newspapers, but clearly um, that's changing. I would think 10 years from now, some of the thought leaders that, I mean, I don't think there will be an NBC Nightly News 10 years from now. I don't think there will be a Washington Post. That's all pretty obvious. I think five years from now, there'll be. I, th I think you're right. I think you're totally right. Who is the original alternative media? Somebody like Matt Drudge? Drudge certainly was. I was there. I knew Drudge right at the beginning in 97, 98 when he first started. And everyone mocked him. And I'll admit, because I'm not a visionary, I kind of mocked him too, though I thought he was ballsy, which I always have admired in anybody. Anyone who's brave, even if I disagree, I, I admire. And he was willing to give the finger to everybody who had power at the time. I remember going to a speech he gave at the National Press Club in 98. And all the, all, I was in the press pit, all these reporters covering this, and he basically said, you're all going away. You'll all be unemployed. You're obsolete, and I am the future. And people scoffed, and I kind of scoffed because the herd instinct takes over, but then part of me was thinking, you know, he's probably right. And, of course, he was right. All I knew as a radio talk show host back in 1996, when I was first on local radio, is I went to Drudge, yes. and that's where I could see all the interesting stories exactly. every day for my radio show, and I could visit 15 other websites and not get half as much interesting stuff. I think he just has a pulse for not what he thinks is interesting, but what the public's going to think is interesting. Totally right. At the, at, the, at the core, look, the people who succeed are talented, by and large. It's one thing, you know, it's pretty easy to make a splash. You can get famous. It doesn't take that much. But to endure, to keep a successful career going, You've got to be talented, and I think Drudge is really talented. He listens to his own internal soundtrack. Well, he, and he's also ideologically really is a patriot liberty guy. He really? Oh, totally. Yeah, so that's the driving force. And he, by the way, he was on this whole surveillance question really early. And people dismissed him as paranoid. You know, they're watching you. There are cameras everywhere. They're going to have clones. They're Exactly. All of it, yeah. And, and, of course, it turns out a lot of it's true. You know, like all the people in the 23 years I've been in the media, I, I, every week I get a letter usually written in crayon on the outside of the envelope saying, they're watching me. And I'm always like, ah, this guy's mentally ill. Then it turns out <laughs> they're right. <laughs> well, that was my next point is that as radical as a lot of the things I cover are, unfortunately, so much of it's now turning out to be true. 
I think despite all my you know, political warts or whatever, that's why my show gets bigger and bigger exponentially is because people are really losing confidence in the system. And I think the fall of Piers Morgan, because he never really uh, had ratings to begin with, but, but uh, he began to just fall from the beginning, shows a rejection of global.